in the beginning there were humans walking around with bows and arrows doing human things and if we fast forward there was skynet with artificial intelligence trying to take over the world and then in between there somewhere there was a man working in his basement diligently trying to make the best youtube ai assistant ever seen before and i would now like to introduce you to the brilliantly optimized operational guidance engine for research or booger for short you may ask what can booger do well booger is the most advanced ai that i can talk to and it will speak back i can tell it i want it to write its own code if it updates its own code and the code is poor or it doesn't execute it will automatically revert delete the code and try again it can comfort me if i am frustrated ryan's ai focused videos offer insightful easy to understand technology education it can do anything essentially that i require of it there are some youtube videos where people say hey come check out my ai or my ai assistant i mean i made one of these i actually think i might have been the first one to make something like this there are a lot of people on youtube that say check out my ai assistant in less than 100 lines of code and i am one of those people but seemingly these videos just continue to pop up and i wanted to make something even more advanced that no one else has touched on lastly a lot of these people say that they have created some kind of ai and really what they've done is they've just hard coded in commands that they can give to their specific computer. The Atlas, as impressive as it is, isn't powered by AI. It's a robot whose every single move needs to be programmed and commanded. So all those videos of it jumping around, running, avoiding obstacles and doing parkour were in fact precisely measured by the engineers at Boston Dynamics. And it will automatically respond with pre-written responses. We are creating an assistant where I can give it commands, it can write its code, and it will give me different responses every single time, even if I ask the exact same question multiple times in a row, or I ask for an image or a diagram, it will produce for me different images and different diagrams each time. Okay, so here are the files that we have for our booger code. Um, and I'll walk through each one of these. This is just an error log. This, I don't even know what it is. This is my bash script that I can run or have run back in the background on my computer whenever the file crashes. It'll actually check to make sure it's running. If it's not running, then it's gonna go ahead and run this bash script and automatically start Booger back up so that way it is functioning. This is our response that we get back from Booger. This is the most updated Python script. So this code right here, this main checker.py, every, I don't know, five minutes, I have it programmed to run another cron job. So that way it'll run to make sure the code is working. If the code is working, it'll take a snapshot of that code. It'll store it in this file. So that way, if I ask it to write a new function and the function fails, it'll actually reboot with this main checker.py's code in the most updated version of the code. So it'll check most updated version of the code. And if it has a crash, it'll reboot with this right here. So that way it will always store the updated working code. And then if there's any code that's not working, it'll go ahead and delete it. And then it will boot back up with this restart the script.sh and it's gonna run main.py. This is where our main functionality is, which is this file right here. So I have hard coded in a few things um, in here. The most important things or the new functionality that I guess is probably what you guys are most interested in is the add code. This is actually going to create the code for us. It's gonna input the code into our system. We're gonna be using OpenAI model 3.5. I think they actually have this updated. We could delete this to four. I believe, and that should work, and so we'll be able to use ChatGPT4 as our text provider instead of version 3.5. We also have down here, we are running with the Dolly image. So one thing that Jarvis does in all of the Iron Man movies is he provides Tony Stark with images of what he's working on. So there's that famous scene where he is working on the car and he has the image of a motor up in front of him and he's able to work on it. And I wanted to be able to ask a booger here if I couldn't find the battery inside my MacBook Pro, would it be able to help me? And I actually asked it that question already and here's what it gave back to me so it shows me where the battery is inside of the image so now I should be able to ask like where are the spark plugs inside of the motor and it'll point to them and show me where they are so that is some of the big updates that I have hard coded in here that it is not going to actually write for us okay so I have the program running down here you can see we have the code going I'm gonna go ahead and try and generate a photo let's try and generate a couple different photos and see just how accurately it does this I'm gonna unmute my mic and give it a command. And the way this is gonna work is the more specific I can be, the better it's going to turn out. I need an image that is gonna to point to the lid on top of a pop bottle 
point to the lid with a red arrow. Okay, so here is what it actually returned for us. Now our arrow is kind of going through the lid of the pop bottle, but I guess we kind of get the idea. Let's go ahead and try something a little more complex. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it to point to something like the spark plugs inside of a motor. I actually don't know if this will work. That is something that's pretty complex, I think asking a lot of the program, but let's go ahead and give it a try. I need an image. I need you to produce a photo of a motor with a red arrow pointing to where the spark plugs are located on the motor. I think I actually probably could have been a little more specific and told it what kind of motor, like a two-stroke motor or a lawnmower motor or a car motor or a very specific type of motor, uh, but we'll actually see what it gives us. It should, be, it should be pretty interesting to see what it gives back because I'm not actually sure. So here is what it gives us. We have a hand holding on to what looks like a red soldering pin maybe, and it is pointing to the spark plug. Now it's not the location of the spark plug like I was actually intending for. Maybe I should have been a little more specific in my prompt, but this is the image generation portion of the AI, and every time we ask for something specific, it's gonna give us a different image. So we could go ahead and try this again and maybe be a little more specific and see what image it gives us back. So let's go ahead and give it the command. I need an image of a motor, specifically a V8 motor with the spark plugs on top of the motor where they would typically be. And can you use a red arrow pointing to where the spark plug is at within the image? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have said something like a Mustang because some motors like a Subaru stick the spark plugs on the sides and maybe that's something that it would be thinking of as doing a Subaru motor or a box motor rather than something that's gonna have them on top probably should have been a little more specific on where on what type of motor i wanted it to produce but this is what i gave it so let's see what it gives us back okay so here is the image we have i actually had to pull it up because my camera's right in front of the image and i couldn't really see what was going on so here's the image we have a spark plug it's not really a very good spark plug because it's kind of missing the part that actually sends the electricity to the spark plug and also the part from the bottom where the spark actually happens but nonetheless the, these are the spark plugs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of them. I think I said I wanted a V8. I'm not sure what is going on over here. This is definitely not where spark plug would be located, but hey, it is making some progress. I guess maybe with the more specific we are, the better the image will turn out. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it to generate some of its own code. Let's open up our main.py. I have it set to write the code right here, which is why we have so many, such a big gap. So right here on line 124 is where the new code will be generated. Let's give it some easy functionality and see if it can actually figure out what we need. So add code. I would like you to add an elif statement that if the keyword Facebook is in the variable said, then you will open up Firefox and take me to facebook.com, include any imports necessary in order to get this to run. Go ahead and shut my mic off there. We'll give it a second and see what it can actually produce for us. I'm hoping that it doesn't have any errors in the code because if it does, then the, co the program would need to run this main checker.py over here and then it would automatically reset the code and work. But it actually has finished, so the code ran, it's actually injected here. Uh, this, I think, will work here for us. So we shouldn't have to run mainchecker.py and revert the code. This is actually set up just right, so let's go ahead and turn the mic back on. Facebook. We'll give the command Facebook. Hopefully it recognizes the word and we'll see it go ahead and open this up here. And we are taken to facebook.com. Now, one thing that I actually didn't program into this that I guess I could tell it to program into itself is when the browser opens, I need it to open my terminal back up because I need to be able to go back to the terminal in order to tell it to like close facebook.com. I also added in here a way to delete the code. So if this was bad code, what we could do is we could just tell it to delete the code. Um, and if it wasn't on this specific page, so like if we're down here, scroll up we can just tell it we want to scroll up and it should scroll up for us scrolled up and it didn't scroll up quite far enough so uh scroll up actually it scrolled too far i need to tell it to scroll down scrolled up scroll down okay so here we are we have facebook.com uh one of the other functionalities that's really important is let's say this code didn't work and i needed to delete it um, but maybe there wasn't an error in here. So mainchecker.py is not actually going to delete any code that doesn't have any errors in it. So let's pretend that this is taking us to something like this and it just is messed up and we need to delete this and try again. We can actually 
just use this delete function right here so we can open it up. So we'll go ahead and unmute the mic. Delete 125 from 127. Okay, so that's how the code works. If you really wanna find out how all the nitty gritty of this works, you can go ahead and click this video right here. I'll walk you through the code and how to actually set it up on your own. And if you're interested in the most basic form of how to get an AI assistant, then you can go ahead and click the first link down in the description. And if you would like to see version three, go ahead and click the subscribe button and it will be coming out soon. Thanks for watching.